Well, it seems like uh, Captain Eddie and I always have about the same thing coming to mind. And I was going to talk about uh, some uh, safety shields. Uh, I had read an article of a, uh, a Turner back in 2012. Her name is Lynn Yamaguchi. I'm sure many of you have heard, heard of her. She's a fantastic Turner. And she had a very tragic accident in 2012. And ever since she's been recovering, but she's back to turning full time again. So I'm going to read you part of this article. I'm going to skip part of it, but I'm going to go. Anyways, it's going to be a little bit long today, but I just wanted to read this to you to show you just how fragile our faces. Anything can happen in a second. And this, is a, this article was written by Lynn, and she says, safety matters from the eye of a survivor. Pretty safe. I would always say I've been pretty safe. My answer two years ago, if you ask me now, was while I was turning, following safety guidelines, I dressed appropriately. I wore a respirator, and I wear face shields, except when standing. I stand on a platform so I can work ergonomically. I'm short. I keep my tools sharp and equipment maintained. I read manuals carefully, including warnings. I would not dream of working after drinking a beer. I like imperfections, so I take calculated risk, turning unbalanced, irregular, and flawed work. But I also take extra precautions and countermeasures. I am a bit clumsy and distractible, but not reckless. And I am experienced since turning has been my full-time occupation since 2003. On September 21st, 2012, I learned I was not safe enough. I was turning an end grain hollow vessel from a short segment of badly cracked mesquite, about six and a half inches long, and the di diameter was 10 inches. Uh, I had chosen a crack log to fill, uh, to fill an order of vessels with turquoise inlay, 12 of which I had already safely turned. The wood was obviously dangerous, and I had been treating it with as much shape uh, as such, shaping the exterior at a low 150 RPM to 450 RPM. Between centers and wrapping duct tape around their shoulders and body before hollowing. I had mounted the vessel in a truck to hollow using speeds up to 550 RPM. Because of the cracks, I deliberately left the wall substantial, one and a quarter to more than two inches thick, planning to reduce it further after finishing the interior. As I finished hollowing, I turned up the speed to 1200 RPMs to make a few cleanup passes. This speed did not feel unsafe, there was no vibration and I was out of the line of fire. Although I normally dial the speed up and down to zero every time I start or stop the lathe. In this case, after I found the sweet spot, a smooth, fast speed that allowed a clean cut on uninterrupted surface, I used the power button to stop, check my cut and restart for another cut or two. I stopped and restarted once or twice, possibly three times. Then I stopped to answer the phone. Without the interruption, what would likely have happened based on previous experience is this. I would have sucked the shavings out, taken a last look, and deciding I was ready to start filling the interior cracks, I would have reached over to turn the speed back to zero without turning the lathe back on. But the interruption happened. Answering the phone call interrupted my normal sequence. Further, it changed the protection I was wearing. Up until that point, I had been wearing a half mask respirator, my glasses, a full face shield. To answer the phone, I took off my face shield and dropped my respirator. After hanging up, I straight away pulled the respirator back on out of habit. Instead of putting the face shield back on, however, I took a moment to look at the vessel. I had cut as much as I dared from the interior. 
the exterior curve at the mouth was not quite as I wanted. So I decided to look at the vessel spinning to see past the duct tape to check the rest of the curve. I pulled the power button on. I could not blame the interruption for what happened. And I know from experience the hazard of turning the lathe when the speed is high. I had in fact been trying to train myself to check the speed dial position before turning the lathe back on after an interruption. This I failed to do. My foul, my harm. When I turned the lathe back on, the high speed did not trigger alarm. I often turn at high speed, breaking on smaller, more delicate pieces. And I was only looking after all. The irony is that my next step would have been to turn the lathe off. I have a clear image of the piece as I last saw it, wrapped in duct tape. I could have touched up the exterior surface even if I'd wanted to. Also, the tool was not in the right was not the right one, and I had not even raised it for use. If I had my forearm up, it might have provided some protection. As it was, I was just looking. I heard the wood give, and something slammed my face. I stepped back off my platform and dropped to my knees. I could feel warm liquid begin to flow from my face. Now I'm not going to go into the gory detail. We're, we're going to pass all that. The damage, all the bones on the left side of her face were broken. The uh, her eye her the went from the top of her teeth to her eyebrow and from inside her nose to her temple, they were all fractured. It took four titanium plates to reconstruct her face. The bone at my temple was pulverized with not enough left intact to even attach a plate. My eyelids were split through and hanging loose. My lower eyelid did not survive. My brilliant surgeon has since made a new one and is using cartilage from my ear. And she speaks on about all her injuries. Given the severity of my injuries, I wondered how much difference my face shield would have made. Now we all know that it would have made a little difference, but in her case, just how much difference? Now I'm not advocating taking off your face shield. Make sure you always have that on. But in her circumstance, she got hit with 125 joules, which is the kinetic speed. Face shields in the United States, the safety standards for eyeglasses and face shields are specified in the NASI Z87.1. They haven't, I looked them up today. And this, this article was written in 2014. I looked them up. They have not changed. Under those specifications, to be rated impact resistant, a face shield needs to withstand an impact of about four joules of kinetic energy and a penetrating impact of about six joules. The vessel I was turning broke into three pieces and the one that hit me weighed one kilogram or 2.2 pounds, traveling at nearly 15 meters per second. It struck me with 127 joules. What's interesting is that Europe, Australia and New Zealand, they have higher standards. With the high, they have the highest rating, high energy impact and extra high impact, respectively. But even those would not have protected her because they go up to 15 joules. When you're doing a high impact, we want to make sure we stay we, we stay out. We we know that uh, even. Remember the face shield that, that Scott had when, when he was turning and he showed the impact when the item hit his face shield, it helped. Yeah. He he had replaced the, the, the face shield, but he did not get hurt. But ha, can you imagine something coming at you at 127 joules? The woman now wears wears a uh, a police uh riot gear helmet because they're rated for 111 joules and it's it's enough to cover her face she can still wear goggles or face or eyeglasses her uh, safe safety glasses and her respirator on, under it but 
what I'm saying today is your your face and your eyes, my gosh, people, we need to protect them. The best we, you can go higher than what she did. She said that, and this was in 2014, the, uh, uh, the shields for uh, the police riot gear, they're under $100. Now with inflation, I'm sure it's more than that. But it's, and they do come pretty light. She says she's chosen the lightest one. Uh, I just want everybody to know that even for professionals, it only takes a second. Make sure you have your face shield on. One thing that I did learn today by reading the, the ANSI guidelines is that the face shield is part of it, but for the uh, for people that are working with a face shield for impact, they must also have safety glasses underneath it. Mm. So just remember, if you, I have prescription safe safety glasses, and I do wear those underneath my face shield. So I'm just saying, guys and gals, it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, be safe out there. Try not to get any interruptions, because at that point, you're not going to do, do what you normally do. And uh, I just want everybody to be safe out there. Now, on a lighter moment, I was talking to my sis sister today, talking about the safety topic that I was going to do. And she doesn't know anything about turning. You know, she, 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 she just says it's a tool, and, but she does know the name of a grinder. So she goes, this is what you tell them. You can grind all day long, but if you come back with four fingers and two thumbs, it's a good day. So with that, I'm going to end the day, folks. Make it a good day, and I hope to see you next week. Take care. Right on. Thanks, Sue. Thank you, Sue. All right. Thank you, Sue.